one. Hello, everyone. Um, if you're still coming in, um, just you'll, we're recording now, so um, some of you may be trickling in a little bit late, but that's okay. Um, so let's get started. Um, welcome to the Open Ed 20 community meeting for June. Um, uh, my name is Tiffany Reardon and I and Emily Reagan are going to be running this month's meeting um, along with some uh, comments and um, notes from other people on the steering committee. Um, so yeah, let's get, let's move forward. Um, just a quick reminder, um, these are your steering committee members. Um, we're all working really hard to make the conference happen. So, um, you know, just know us, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so um, another reminder, um, we are using Menti again for this meeting. So um, to collect feedback from you guys, as we have for the previous meetings, um, Please uh, take a moment to select your favorite device and navigate to menti.com. Um, there's also a mobile app if you prefer that. Um, when you're there, you want to enter the code on the screen here. It's um, 220415. And um, you may, so you may want to use one device to view the presentation and one to log in to Menti. Um, just to so that you can both watch and also contribute your thoughts and ideas. Um, we are relying on this tool to collect your responses um, and we will share the results after the survey closes. Um, and anyone who can't join us today for the call or needs to leave early, as I know um, that uh, uh, Jen Rin has said she does have to log off a bit early. So anyone else who needs to log off early you will be able to still contribute responses to Menti for the next few days. And um, Nicole and Haley have both put the link also in the chat for you guys. Um, just to get us started here, um, as we have been, we wanna know how you guys are doing. So um, if you will choose your character that represents you now or in over the last month, um, we have the cha-cha chihuahua, the kinesthetic kitty, the perspicacious penguin, the unstoppable unicorn, the fatigued frog, the tenacious turtle, the dizzy dachshund, and the stalwart starfish. And I can see we're starting to respond and we have quite a few pers perspicacious penguins. And we've got some fatigued frogs and some stalwart starfishes. It's kind of fun. I don't know. I like those answers. I like these questions. They're fun. So, okay, you can move forward, Nicole. Sorry. <laughs> um, and also, just like every other meeting, we still want to know where you're joining us from to get an idea of where everyone's at. So if you will put in your US state, Canadian province, or other country, um, and we should have a word cloud populating here in a moment. Got, looks like some people from Colorado, California, New York, Wisconsin, Let's see who's from other countries. What do we have? New, the new COVID epicenter. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, let's see, we've got someone from British Columbia. And oh gosh, it's hard to keep track because it keeps moving. But um, Yeah, so we've got some people joining us from different areas um, and it looks like there are, um, there's at least one person in the chat who is having trouble getting into Menti. So if someone wants to put um, those instructions into the chat again, maybe. I know the link's there, but yeah. 
Um, okay, so I am going, the, that was a good little starter for us and it's good to know who all is here. Um, so let's pass it off to Nicole for a planning process update. Wonderful. So uh, thanks so much, Tiffany. And uh, we're going to hear from a few people in the section. First up is uh, Daniel Williamson from OpenStax. All right. Thank you so much. Um, hope everybody's doing well. So we are continuing to work on shoring up um, what this event will look like this year. Things we know for sure. Uh, the conference dates are confirmed for November 9th through 11th. Um, so make sure those are in your planners, in your calendars, uh, your trapper keeper if you have one. Um, we are also moving forward full steam ahead uh, with the online conference planning. Additionally, you know, we saw from the data last month um, that meetings that require travel are going to be difficult this year, um, either because of funding challenges or discomfort traveling or potentially regulations against traveling. Um, so while we currently have a, a venue under contract um, with a hotel in Denver, um, we are talking with them on Monday to further understand our options. You know, no matter what, um, if there is an in-person event, this is going to look totally different than any open ed we've ever had before. So we're exploring, you know, what the state regulations look like in Colorado, what their rules will look like if there's an event capacity limits, how we would potentially enforce a six foot distancing, how we would provide for um, personal protective equipment like masks and gloves and hand sanitizer, all that type of stuff. And I, I was the person who said the new COVID epicenter and where I'm coming from because I don't know what the state of play looks like at your home states, but here in Houston and Texas, things aren't looking very great at the moment. And in fact, the governor today has rolled back a lot of the openings that were authorized just a month ago. So, you know, the cone of uncertainty is very wide. So in order to make the planning process as easy as possible, I hope that we can have a really concrete plan by our next meeting um, to say whether or not there's going to be an in-person event at all. And until then, the planning process is going to be go forward focusing on the pieces that we know we can control, which is online attendance. Um, so we're going to be making tons of progress there and then hopefully next month we will have a really solid plan um, and know all of our options with regard to the current venue um, uh, that's an in-person venue and whether or not we can negotiate something there so stay tuned um, but for now make sure those dates are in your in your calendars um, and be on the lookout for updates from us shortly thank you Wonderful. Uh, also want to give an opportunity for uh, Spencer and MJ uh, from uh, Colorado and Maryland to, to share updates. Spencer. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Daniel. Um, super excited to continue this momentum with this uh, reimagining of open ed. So thank you all so much for it. I just am so excited every time I get on these calls and I see how many participants there are. And it's just a testament to people's dedication and um, excitement and enthusiasm around open education. So very exciting to see. Um, here on the ground in Colorado, um, as Daniel mentioned, you know, we're also keeping a very close eye on the requirements from the state. Um, fortunately, our department is, is part of the governor's executive cabinet. And so we get those regular updates quite frequently, which we are sharing with Daniel um, and the rest of the planning team to help make informed decisions. Um, and the latest from the governor's office is, you know, reminding folks that it remains critical for Colorado to keep taking steps to protect themselves. And our state success thus far has been due to the actions of personal responsibility of all Coloradans. And that will continue to be true as long as we continue to wear masks and follow social distancing guidelines. And we'll avoid seeing cases climb like in some neighboring states. Um, not too pick on anybody in neighboring states, but uh, that's kind of the, uh, the current status here in Colorado. Um, again, working closely with the team to help make informed decisions and happy to answer questions for, for folks who are curious about anything else going on in Colorado. And MJ? 
Spencer, spoken like a true state employee. Well done. Um, we're in the same boat here. Um, and obviously, if this was a normal year, um, we would already be starting to uh, approach hotels and venues for uh, Open Ed 2021. Um, but we are not doing that right now because quite frankly, we don't want to put ourselves in a position again for next year where we uh, uh, you know, are having to renegotiate contracts and think about you know, how are we going to make this work. So um, we will continue to keep a, monitor the situation, keep an eye on it, make sure that for 2021, if it's, if it's going to be in Maryland, that uh, we're ready to pounce um, as soon as we think we've got uh, an open road ahead. Um, and uh, I'll echo what Spencer said about just, you know, how great the planning work has been so far. And, um, you know, I, I often, in the, in the academic innovation space, talk to folks who serve on groups like this about dealing with ambiguity and how difficult that can be. And um, kudos to all of you for hanging in there as, uh, as we navigate these uncertain times. Thanks. Thanks, MJ. And, uh, you know, I, I think when our four organizations sort of got together and, and put forward the proposal uh, for, you know, two, the first two years of, of the conference and its uh, new form, uh, we, this, is, this isn't sort of what we expected, but I just want to thank everybody who's been involved in the process thus far. And, uh, you know, I, I think the conversations that were happening that are happening are, are really important and uh, you know we're, we're doing the best we can and we're going to gather in November, no matter what it looks like. All right. So moving forward on the planning update uh, just wanted to share an, an, an update on the, the volunteer front. Uh, I know that we have uh, uh, many new people joining this call. So welcome. Uh, welcome to uh, volunteers and planning team members who are on the call. Uh, as, as everybody knows, uh, we had previously put out a, a call for volunteers. We were, uh, you know, overwhelmed and excited and, and just really happy to see such a strong re response with uh, over 120 people signed up for that. Uh, the steering committee <laughs> has uh, spent a lot of time working through uh, all of the, you know, the wonderful information that all of you shared and, and, and really putting a lot of thought and intention into how to structure uh, a volunteer system for the conference that made sense. And uh, uh, ultimately, uh, we ended up uh, forming a set of planning teams, uh, most of which are, are nearly fully formed or completely fully formed. We'll be sharing out uh, the, the full te details of those, those teams probably next week, uh, but they will be meeting over the next uh, couple of weeks and, and really get to work on, on key parts of the, the conference planning process. And then uh, there's a whole lot of volunteers that are signed on to help out with important projects that are gonna be coming up, uh, especially the proposal review process, which will kick off after the call for proposal opens and uh, other efforts that are going to pop up as uh, we move through, through the various stages of, of playing the conference in uh, its, its various formats. So uh, I do, you know, <laughs> the only thing that is challenging about having 120 <laughs> volunteers is just the amount of um, the amount of time it takes. So thank you to everybody for your patience through this process, and we're so excited to get to work. Uh, and if you, you know you haven't received an, a specific assignment yet, uh, we will be in touch very soon. Nicole, so, yeah, we have a quick question. Oh, uh, is there? Yeah. Yes, is there a way to check if we have already completed the volunteer form? Yes, uh, in fact, Haley will be putting into the chat or already did and it got buried a link to the form. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Lee. Well, and Lee, why don't I hand it uh, straight over to you uh, to talk about the, the planning team specifically. Okay. And their role. Thanks, Nicole. I'm going to just give a quick summary uh, for these five teams. So the program team, they will develop and manage the process for constructing the conference program, including how to organize tracks, session types, and the proposal review process. The online conference team will be responsible for structuring a robust, engaging, and accessible online conference, uh, whether the conference is hybrid or fully online. 
Diversity, equity, and inclusion will be a core consideration for all planning groups. So the DEI team um, will provide guidance, support, and coordinate, uh, coordination of these efforts. The communications team will support development of the conference's social media presence, public identity, website, and general keeping attendees and the committee informed. And then for the future of open ed team, they will focus um, specifically on the important process of developing long-term plans for community ownership of the conference. So those are the current teams. Um, Nicole, did you have anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, yeah, thanks, Lee. Just just noting that originally we had uh, uh, identified a couple of other teams to put together and are moving forward with these five for now, uh, and we'll be looking into forming additional uh, teams as the conference's needs become clear, just because a lot of things are up in the air right now. So basically, stay tuned. <laughs> More to come. Uh, all right. So that covers the uh, planning process update. I'm going to turn it over to Tiffany uh, for a set of benchmark questions. Thanks, Nicole. Um, OK, so we want to get a feel for um, where we are at on some of the questions we actually asked at the last meeting, see how things are changing, um, getting worse or better, depending on how you look at it. So. Um, one, assuming public health conditions allow, how do you plan to attend Open Ed 20 on November 9th through 11th? Um, we have in person in Denver, um, online, or if you're just completely unsure, um, we want to see where you are at so that we can compare to last month's answers. So if you want to answer that. And, um, Okay, so we do have a lot of people planning on attending online, um, very few in person, and some unsure. And I think this has actually changed significantly since last month, so that's good to know. Yeah, so last month we had a lot more unsures, um, and it seems like some of those unsures may have moved to online now. Um, and I think you're right, Jeff, that travel restrictions are starting to form. Um, so, but it's good to have this information that helps us make our decisions. So, um, okay. And um, also for comparison, um, assuming public health conditions allow, give your best guess on the following statements, re-attending Open Ed 20 in person. So um, very unlikely versus very likely, if you wanna do a sliding scale of um, uh, one, I will have funding for travel, two, I will be allowed to travel by your employer, and three, I will be willing or able to travel personally. Okay, so it looks like um, some people will have funding. Um, fewer people will be allowed. And then we've got some people who are willing, um, but they're every, everything is kind of on the, the bottom half of the scale, so. And it doesn't look like it changed too much from last month. Um, it looks like we had more people who were willing and able um, last month and uh, that has gone down. Um, and so has the being allowed to travel a little bit. The funding seems to be fairly similar though. Um, so that is also all good to know and helps us make our decisions. Um, so with those benchmark questions in place and um, our ability to make those comparisons, I am going to pass it off to Emily, our other um, meeting host, to talk about some uh, program forming questions. Um, let's have a discussion around that. Emily. Thank you, Tiffany. Well, clearly the program is at the core of what Open Ed 20 is going to be. And so I'm really excited that we get to have this discussion. And just to clarify, right now we're really focusing on online because of that uncertainty around the face-to-face -face elements. So as we have this discussion, keep 
online for sure in the front of your mind as you're helping answer these questions. And um, your responses are obviously going to help all the planning teams, but especially the program team as we move forward. And so just to recap some of the th uh, things that have come up in our prior meetings, multiple people have mentioned an interest in no keynotes. And this is an issue that we're going to come back and we have a couple questions around later in the presentation. So we're going to gather some more information around keynotes. Uh, some other themes have been to avoid or clearly mark vendor presentations that we want robust representation from people of color and be welcoming to people of color. And we want to elevate voices that are on the margins. The importance of accessibility and making sure that people can see and hear and otherwise access the information shared at the conference. And the importance of inclusive networking and mentorship opportunities and how we do want to help newcomers feel welcome. Yes. So kind of, you know, so setting the stage with what some of our prior conversations have generated, our question for you first is what do you personally want to learn at Open Ed 20? And so this is going to allow you to enter a short answer and in a few moments as the responses will start coming in, we're going to see them scrolling up our screen. But again, for you personally, what would you like to learn? So new ideas. What's happening for other people, trends, strategic planning, pedagogy, diverse voices and OER how to improve learning outcomes, leading campus initiatives, focus on the K-12 landscape and connecting between higher ed and K-12, interested in policy ideas. Several people are interested in what other folks are working on, leveraging the impact of COVID. Yes, COVID-19 and open education. Innovative approaches, creation platforms, what's next? Absolutely, where does open education go from here? Trends of OER, both in the nation and the world, being strategic for our campus initiatives, long-term planning, global stories. Focus on online, recognizing the shift to more online teaching right now. Publishing, planning for larger OER projects, research, best practices. Supporting inclusion and diversity, fair use. Sustainability, promoting OER, effectiveness research. Yeah, again, we're seeing more with pedagogy, more with strategic planning and sustainability again. Nice, this is so rich and helpful for us as we um, think about themes, potential tracks, think about how we're going to be organizing content and making sure that people are going to be able to get what they want to out of this conference. Learning about exciting work that students, faculty, and librarians are doing, even if they don't have institutional support. Absolutely, I think um, sustaining and building connections, feeling motivated, <laughs> helping us um, become re-energized, right? So sharing and comparing current work. Yes, we are. We will circle back around and we have some questions around keynotes to really get um, broad impact, broad impact, broad input from, from a variety of voices on the topic of keynotes. So we'll get to that in just a little bit. A broader view of the history of OER what to do about inclusive access. 
practical applications, helping campuses who feel like maybe they're starting to stall, how to incorporate Black, Indigenous, and people of color. International collaboration. Open's role in dismantling structural racism. Z degrees, teaching and learning research with open slash OER, more with the anti-racism intersection, how to strengthen the student movement and OER work, and sustainability via OER orgs. And what to do when we don't have institutional interest or support, libraries and how they're lever leveraging OER. We wanna hear about successful research, peer review models, how to do more with OER without a stipend or grant program. Right now is funding getting, is getting tight. As a grad student, I want to know more about what I can aspire to. Funding models, again, improving learning outcomes. Yes, there's fantastic ideas here and thank you all for participating and sharing with us. It looks like we've uh, received, oh, Voices from the Global South, um, maybe 137 responses here, which is super exciting. How we can use research in the field and bring it back to our institutions to help build support for open ed. We are creation platforms. Definitely we want to hear what other people are working on. We want to make OER reflect diverse voices. So I think we might be ready, even though this is so rich, we have another great question next, which is, as we're ready, we're going to ask next, what do you want to share at the Open Ed Conference? So the past question was, what did you want to learn? What are you coming to share and hoping to share at Open Ed 20? And I'm hearing in the chat the importance of making this meeting more international, appealing to historically Black colleges and universities and Africa. And Sadly, some people want to share a drink at the conference, and we may be uh, doing that virtually, as well as the virtual karaoke that we're looking forward to. Okay, so how we're moving toward more accessible OER on day one. Someone wants to share their sabbatical project, someone else positive student feedback with OER, someone else online education and OER. State Emily, efforts. Yeah. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute because this question was set to single response. So I'm just going to fix that real quick. Fantastic. And then I'll reshare share the screen. So everybody who's on it, keep talking. <laughs> yes. So, you know, we're doing our best, right, with this fantastic ne technology and recognizing that you may want to share multiple things at this conference. We're going to make it possible for you to share those multiple responses. Okay. If, Fantastic. If refresh your device um, if you're not able to enter additional things. Okay. So more great things. Sharing connections with others in the field, um, news about new projects, a sense of welcome and inspiration. Oh, uh, state-supported OER repository and evolution over the past seven years. Things learned from the Open Textbook Network Librarian Program. Developing and recently published OER textbooks from Hawaii. Other materials and student-created content. Problems and then solving them using our conference time. Developing online professional development. Experimenting with online and digital systems and technology. Some people are too overwhelmed to think of sharing. And of course, that's great. We can also just come to absorb um, advocacy strategies, lessons learned about doing it at scale, ideas for smaller universities, 
research experiences and practices, student success, K-12 connections, creating faculty champions, OER grants and projects, mm, global collaboration among institutions, info and results from the Canadian Online Education Consortium, materials and student created content, projects with faculty, having a student OER specialist program and student OER toolkits, ideas to propel the movement into a more mainstream public dialogue, thoughts on OER and open educational practice in K-12. We've got the karaoke coming through here again, online professional development, open pedagogy and universal design, results of renewable assignments, new global focus in humanities teaching. Assessing open education student learning, equity, and open education statewide strategies. Insidious business practices of some big publishers. A syllabus project, faculty authored projects, lessons learned about doing it at scale, how OER is enabling better learning and teaching. That's just so at the core, <laughs> so at the core of what we're doing creating faculty champions. Thank you. So we have about 57 responses to this question. And again, recognizing not everyone needs to share, but we are really looking forward to the exchange of ideas and not just ideas, but also energy and enthusiasm that can happen at this conference. And in the chat, Michael shared that um, I love the idea of workshopping issues. So perhaps, perhaps this is a good time to move forward to our next question, which has little sliding bars. And what we're going to ask you next is what kind of conference session types should there be? And again, for this conversation, we're focusing on online. Definitely, we're having an online component to this conference. So we have online content like videos and blog posts. So you get to slide your slider from less important on the left to more important on the right. We also have lightning talks, approximately 10 minutes. And online content as in asynchronous would be for the very top bar is my understanding. The idea is that we certainly would have synchronous content as well. Um, so lightning talks, people share very briefly and efficiently what they're doing. So that's the 10 minute slot. Presentations at 20 or 25 minutes allows for a more in-depth discussion um, of the topic they're presenting about. And even more in-depth would be standalone talks at more of a 30 to 45 minute time frame. So one question we're kind of asking is how long do you think people need to communicate their projects? Do we need multiple lengths of time? Um, we have panels in there where there would be multiple individuals participating in a panel discussion at probably somewhere between 45 and 60 minutes. There's the potential of having a more of a workshop or training that would come in from perhaps one to two hours. Is there interest in a pre-conference event? So sometimes the, the half day before the conference starts, there might be a pre-conference or multiple pre-conference sessions. And then an idea that had come up in an earlier call was the idea of having a maker space or um, a sprint for creating content or other sorts of get together and create together sorts of projects. Um, let's see, so where would something like unconferencing slash discussion oriented sessions go. And we will, if nothing else, our very last slide, you get to put more ideas in there. So so hang on to that and give it to us again, <laughs> if you like. Um, is there an assumption that talks, panels, et cetera, would be recorded? And I think certainly we would definitely record some sessions and we haven't finalized whether there would be an expectation that everything needed to be recorded would it be up to the presenter you people could still opt in or out of being recorded that i mean this hasn't been decided yet but these are important issues and um the program committee is going to be meeting and helping us move forward towards getting the call for proposals out which we want to happen in the next month or so and we've got some excitement for the maker sprint 
Um, we could do all of these. That's right. We don't have to just focus on one, but um, we're soliciting your interest in these different options. And right now we do have the most important being for the workshops and the trainings, uh, maybe perhaps a one to two hour time slot. And there's definitely interest in recording the presentations. So probably the default, considering the possibility of having a default for recording and um, let's see. Yeah, so I'm glad we're getting excited about some of the ways we can connect with each other and share information. And then a question is pre-recording presentations or recording as they happen. There's certain, certainly, um, you know, possibilities for both. I think the idea, and of course, other folks on the steering committee are welcome to jump in and help clarify as well. Um, yeah, so someone comments that a recording's archive with captioning can be really helpful. And, you know, another, I, and um, American Sign Language interpretation and captions are important, someone comments. Um, another thing that we don't have on here, but we have certainly talked about is how can we have time for people to socialize and connect maybe a little bit more informally, but after some sort of more formal presentations. And we have a couple questions that hopefully will solicit some ideas related to that um, coming up as well. Yes, perhaps we can do an open cafe of some type to connect and brainstorm. So we definitely um, are going to continue soliciting some feedback on different topics here. And then another question, is the plan for a schedule as intense as past open eds, full days with multiple concurrent tracks every day? Um, and certainly we want to have a lot of space for many people to share. So I imagine there's probably going to be concurrent tracks in some form. Um, but again, this is not set in stone yet. Maybe breakout rooms, virtual tools um, can be integrated for community buildings, for community building. Ideas for virtual happy hour. Okay, fantastic. So let's um, I think some of some of these ideas in the chat too, we might be able to get up on a few of our next slides, but the very next upcoming slide is about the keynotes. So should open ed have keynote sessions. We've heard voices actually on both sides. And so now you get to share your voice. If you're voting yes keynotes. How do you think speakers should be selected. And then if you're voting no, what type of programming would you like to see instead. Okay, so we have some yeses, some interest in workshops and practical applications. Um, yes, selected by the community. No more presentations instead. Yes, it allows people to have a shared experience. Yes, keynotes, but not as many as last year. Fresh ideas, noting that keynotes can be a draw. Again, highlighting the value of workshops and trainings. Some people are not fans. Maybe a keynote panel with diverse voices, but not a solo stage on the stage. So obviously we're going to crunch these results and use them as we decide how we're moving forward with these pieces. We have someone suggesting an interactive facilitated discussion, bringing in everyone's voices a bit like this. That way you have presentations el elsewhere and synthesis here. So the importance of time for synthesis. 
Yes, actively recruit from underrepresented groups. Choose speakers with completed projects and strong future plans. No, smaller workshops and sessions. No, unless you're elevating the work of early career folks. Speakers from outside the normal open ed crowd. Yes, but voices we haven't heard. No, more in conference interactions. Have an opening session devoted to lightning talks. So kind of have a, um, a keynote slot that has lots of short talks. Or one keynote at the opening and one at the closing. Um, have a way for people to suggest keynote speakers and focus on getting people of color to help present. Maybe not a keynote, but a general welcoming session and a closing session. Or we could have a keynote with a different emphasis on each day. Students, yes, of centering voices of marginalized and underrepresented populations. Yes, because some topics lend themselves to the entire community. They could be selected by the program committee, less keynotes than last year. Or maybe a time limit of 30 minutes. Yes, and. Yes, to bring all together. Someone writes, they are not against keynotes as long as they are selected by the community, they are relevant, and they prioritize interaction with the audience. Sorry, someone else isn't interested. Selection based on tangible achievements and outcomes from OER implementation and impact, otherwise unconference. Pre-recorded keynote for those who want it. A final session where the community can come back together like this and give feedback and talk about what they liked the most and the least. Maybe a panel. <laughs> yeah, I like that, an improv keynote. <laughs> um, outside the box keynotes, they can be motivating. A student, perhaps a student panel closing keynote, where do they want OER to go? Or we could have a one year break from keynotes and reset our palette. We want people who would bring unique perspectives and challenge our day to day assumptions and thinking. Perhaps we need to redefine what keynote means. Right. Okay, so we have about 82 responses here. And I, you know, of course, I apologize, I can't read them all, but this is really, really rich. So I appreciate everyone sharing. Yeah, lots of excellent ideas here. Um, someone's interested in having community review as part of the selection process. Other people are really important, uh, emphasizing the importance of conference interactions and applications. Okay. Um, so we've had a few responses come in in the last few moments. Um, so maybe we'll take a minute just to let them keep scrolling. Um, I'm just taking a breath here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited to have all these ideas and these results will be available to us afterwards so we can continue to go back and, you know, mine all these really excellent ideas. So we have a couple more ideas coming in. As we get ready to shift away from yeah. Oh, inspirational moment as an alternative to keynote. Yeah. Thank you. I like that too. We're going to shift now from this very specific idea of keynotes to a broader question about theme. So should Open Ed 20 have an overarching conference theme? Conference themes can be nice for helping provide some cohesion, um, but we also don't want to have something that's overly limiting. And so what are people's thoughts on having um, some sort of broad theme, or, I mean, we'll discuss what the theme would be actually in the next slide, so you can tell me whether you want it to be broad or narrow on the next slide, but for right now, for this slide, should Open Ed 20 have an overarching conference theme? 
Okay, so in early polling, many folks don't have a strong opinion. Slightly more yeses than noes in this moment. And in this moment, about equal numbers of people saying yes and no opinion, and then half of those numbers saying no. So right now we're at about 12 saying no and 20 each for yes and no opinion. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Let's move on to if we do have a theme, what would you like it to be? And so again, this is an excellent chance to brainstorm. Um, and then to kind of reflect, do you want a broad theme? Are you feeling something more specific? What are you feeling? Online education, hashtag intersectional, equity and education. And, and someone who's a yes says they would be curious to hear why people said no. And that's something we can put on the last slide where we'll have more chance for feedback. So open together, liberation, equity and quality, opening doors to open ed, COVID, anti-racism, COVID and open, equity and open, how OER builds flexibility, recentering open time, be more open, equity and access, the care and open, open ed map to sustainable development goal, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Reimagining open ed, redefining open, social justice, anti-racism, a new open education to honor the new direction of this conference. Equity and open education, now more than ever. One wants broad, but with a definite focus or theme, how OER is impacting education during COVID. Durable OER for changing times. The rise of OER, Greece, EDI and online. Quality, quality, quality. Better open textbooks and resources for higher ed. Open by default. Social justice, breaking down the detrimental legacies of education, voices from the margins, resilience of open and crisis, and back to the equity in education, karaoke, uh, and, and a very important element. Uh, I'm smiling, imagining that as the overall theme. Reimagining hashtag community. Yes, and, oh, we like the yes, and. Social justice. <laughs> Don't stop believing, open ed 20. Fantastic, do other folks um, here on the panel want to help read out, <laughs> read out some of these fantastic responses? I can help, Emily. <laughs> Um, so let's see, we have new trends. Um, I'm trying to remember which ones you've already said. So, um, a theme might exclude potential presenters, workshop facilitators. That's a good point to keep in mind. Um, social justice, lots of social justice, uh, recentering open. I don't know what SDGs are. Yeah, I don't either. Does someone want to expand on that in the comments? It's Sustainable Development Goals. SDG oh. 4 is education, equitable oh. education. OK, thank you. Um, we've got reimagining community, curriculum, connections, and open ed, the care. Um, something about moving out of silos. Um, lots of different theme options here. Anti-racism, definitely. Redefining open. Yes, redefine. I think. 
Oh, good. I think we've, we're, you know, we're, this is really helpful again to have yeah. feedback related to the themes. The, we're going to just slightly switch gears again. And our next question is what is most valuable to you about an in person event? And again, recognizing that we're having an online component, but we're stepping back and reflecting on past in person events that we've attended and trying to highlight um, things that have been valuable to us from those. And the time, sorry, you guys, the time is going. So after this, we have just three more slides, so we're going to do fine on time um, in case you're <laughs> getting a little worried because time flies as we're having fun. So networking is totally jumping out and then karaoke and connections. I love that karaoke is such a priority. Definitely community and collaboration, learning. So many, you know, there were different ways of saying it, but ways of connecting with people. Yeah, lots of connection. And social. There are a lot of different ways of saying, basically talking to each other in person and connecting meaningfully, I think. And then if we go to our next slide, this is where we're going to try to bring these elements into an online environment. In the chat, 80% of communication is through body language. So what ideas do you have for how we can replicate those valuable parts of in-person events? in an online environment. So right away, breakout rooms and themed breakout rooms, smaller breakout room sessions, first three answers. Having social spaces, places to have threaded discussions, workshopping problems, meetups that are facilitated like shared eating and drinking time, Oh, sorry, Emily. <laughs> we have another set of technical difficulties. <laughs> no worries. That it's not scrolling. And then something else um, in here in the chat is end of session chat sessions. Always open social rooms for casual conversations, for lunch, virtual lunch or dine arounds. Yeah, end of session chat sessions is interesting, um, almost like a debrief time. Absolutely, because that's when we have lots of ideas floating around in our heads. That's a rich time that we would yeah. normally be talking to each other. <laughs> we need virtual fruit water. Maybe we'll have to have some recipes for quick things we can whip up <laughs> in our locations. Uh, oh, look, we're scrolling. Yay. Okay, so we've got pre-conference introductions of attendees, facilitated meetups, informal persistent virtual meetup sessions. So, so much with these social spaces and breakouts and we need good facilitation for the online karaoke, a robust back channel, unconferencing, brainstorming sessions rather than presentations. So really having a chance for people's voices to get in there. Make links to all sessions available to all, so you can move to a different presentation if you want. Twitter hashtag. Ooh, small workshop sessions with a facilitator, but no set agenda. Trivia social, bring your own drink sessions. Could there be the possibility of local meetups? Planned downtime in the in-person schedule so that folks can connect. Debrief time. A mentoring program for new attendees and seasoned experts. Connection makers. How do you get invited or feel comfortable going to a breakout? 
So this is something for our online um, planning team to really take a close look at these ideas and help us um, figure out how we can integrate the best of technology and our human needs and make sure um, we're getting those met. Okay, so two last slides. Open Ed is scheduled for November 9th through 11th. Should we consider changing the length of the online program? And this was response to some steering committee members who mentioned some online conferences are spreading out over more time um, so they can be a little bit less packed. So we're getting feedback on this. And so far with um, about 20 people responding, we've got a lot of folks who are interested in making it longer and more spread out. Um, we do have maybe about a quarter of respondents saying keep it at three days and only two out of about 50, only three out of about 50 respondents saying make it shorter and more intensive. I mean, there's trade-offs, right? Trade-offs. So, um, absolutely. So the Open Textbook Network just ran something over two weeks, for example. And some people found that exhausting, Zoom fatigue, you know, okay, not too long. Fantastic. Let's move on to our very final question, um, <laughs> which is really, it's just a, a slide saying that's it for today. But this is the place for other ideas or feedback that you would like to share with us. And again, we appreciate all your responses in our chat. So we're also going to be reviewing this Zoom chat as well as comments that people have shared with us through Mentimeter. And again, this is our final slide so we can enjoy our last three minutes together. Yeah, and, and Emily, just to note, even, even though we'll, we'll end on time, uh, this question, uh, we'll leave this running. So if you're still filling out your responses, you can take extra time. Excellent, thanks, Nicole. Okay, so. Let's see, definitely a K-12 chat track. Um, all ideas need to be accepted and not condemned. Some unstructured time, unconference. We want to eliminate contempt. Um, orientation and networking, global participation. If only online make the price affordable. As a newcomer to Open Ed, I'd love to be paired up with someone who knows the ropes a little better. Skill share and project matching. Mentoring should be available for new recruits. So that's a theme. Open conference cookbook, maybe a Google doc for people to suggest panels and share topics. People want recordings of sessions, promoting connections for groups like K-12, nonprofit orgs, districts, higher ed. A community college track would be terrific. Keep time zones in mind. Mentoring for mid-career folks. Unstructured time, unconference, a workshop for student advocates. I appreciate that some people, at least one person said this was the best and most, or for running the best and most organized Zoom sessions they've attended since quarantine began. That Thank you, Nicole, for that. Um, Yes, again, thank you for all of your ideas, for your time, for your participation, for your energy, for your interest. Yes, we know some folks um, are going to need to go. We're pretty much at time. But just again, thank you from all of us. And we're going to continue working and building the Open Ed 20. And um, I'm glad we're all working together.